Расскажите, пожалуйста, кратко об истории Содружества Святого Сергия Албания и о тех целях, которые Содружество имеет. Russian intelligentsia following the revolution of 1917. Um, a large number of um, these uh, um, 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 emigrants found themselves in Paris, and one such emigrant, uh, Nikolai Mikhailovich uh, Zernov, um, uh, together with um, Anglican friends that he had encountered through the um, World Student Christian Fellowship and the Student Christian Movement, uh, decided to hold a conference in the English town of St. Albans um, to discuss points of similarity and difference in the theological and church positions of their respective um, confessions. Following the St. Albans Conference of 1927-28, they wished to have a lasting organization established uh, where there could be a more permanent dialogue and encounter. You must understand that this was around the same time that the official ecumenical organizations were becoming established. What they wanted was something deliberately unofficial, where it would be possible to meet in the spirit of uh, friendship and simple human personal contact, rather than in a situation where results were expected. Uh, one thing that was very important in the context of the fellowship at that time was the possibility of prayer for Christian unity. At that time, uh, I think it is um, fair to say, members of the Church of England and members of the Orthodox Church, particularly um, uh, the Russian Orthodox Church, had a serious hope and a serious expectation that it would be possible for them to um, um, reach a position where they could resume communion with one another. Of course, the uh, situation at that time was rather different from the situation that we have today. But still, the fellowship exists with this um, sense of the importance of personal contact, personal relationship, and prayer for unity amongst Christians, as well, of course, as the uh, need for common work, study, and um, academic pursuit of theology. Um, the worldwide, the fellowship has, um, um, amongst its subscribing members, about 1,500 to 2,000 members. So it's not a huge organization, but its influence is felt um, in particular through our uh, journal, uh, Sabornist, which has also existed now for a number of decades, and in particular amongst um, members of the Anglican Communion, the Roman Catholic Church, other Western confessions who have an interest in orthodoxy in the Eastern Church, in patristic studies, our um, organization is well known. Um, from the very beginning, the fellowship sought to have um, senior members and uh, patrons um, who represented not only the Orthodox Church but also the um, Church of England and the Anglican Communion at large. So at present our patrons, that is our sort of senior um, representatives, include uh, the Archbishop of Canterbury, Rowan Williams, um, Metropolitan Callistus of Diaclea, Callistus Ware, uh, then uh, Archbishop Gregorios of Theatira, who is the uh, head of the uh, um, Archdiocese of the Constantinople Patriarchate here in Britain, and Archbishop Bilisi of Soros, who is the head of the 
uh, Diocese of Surich of the Moscow Patriarchate. Then we have also the Bishop of London, uh, Richard Charters, who is well known for his work in um, promoting contact between the Church of England and in particular the uh, Russian Orthodox Church. You may wonder why there are no Roman Catholics here uh, amongst this list of people, uh, which also includes uh, uh, famous um, uh, theologians and scholars. Uh, the fellowship uh, historically was at arm's length from the Roman Catholic Church, uh, not because of any decision of its own, but because when the fellowship was founded in the uh, late 1920s and early 1930s, it was forbidden for Roman Catholics to have any part in ecumenical organizations or interchurch activities. And in fact, at the time, an encyclical letter was even produced by the head of the Roman Catholic Church in Britain, forbidding his faithful from belonging to the Fellowship of St. Alban and St. Sergius. Uh, now, 70 or 80 years later, we are um, still having to work hard to overcome this. But we're making some progress. Фактически экуменизм только зарождался, только появлялись экуменические организации. И тогда экуменизм представлял собой нечто иное, чем сейчас. Вот чем отличался экуменизм в то время от экуменизма наших дней? Yes, it's uh, quite a difficult question. It's true to say that in the days of the founding of the fellowship, there was a serious hope, but also a serious possibility that there may be closer and closer contact between the Orthodox and uh, the um, Western Christian confessions. Of course, in the last um, 40 or 50 years, there have been many changes in the Anglican Communion. Um, the position of the Anglican Communion now is rather more diverse in terms of theological perspectives um, uh, than it was um, at that time. There have been many changes within the life of the Anglican Communion in general and the Church of England in particular, uh, which make work for Christian unity um, much more challenging. And one might say, um, um, in terms of the original aims, much more difficult to achieve. It is now very difficult as Orthodox to see that there would be any possibility for a resuming of communion between the Orthodox and the um, Anglican Communion as it stands now. On the other hand, we as Orthodox uh, can look at the problems which have been faced by the Anglicans and if we're honest, we will say, must say to ourselves, these are problems which um, if either exist within our own church or if they do not exist in the same way, uh, are likely to exist within the next uh, two or three decades. And so we must face them ourselves. Many of the problems that the um, Church of England is having to address, it has to address because it is trying to have an impact and a role in um, uh, society and to have a relevance to contemporary life and the way in which it chooses to answer those problems may not be the same way that the Orthodox would choose to do so, but we cannot um, uh, deny that the problems exist for both of us. So perhaps within this more challenging situation, we as Orthodox might see uh, the Anglican uh, Communion as having a kind of prophetic role um, foreshadowing things that we ourselves will have to address at some um, particular point in our own deliberations. And as I said at the beginning, the underlying factor in the fellowship's life and common um, expression of unity as it exists now is that of personal friendship. And given our present um, difficulties, this personal friendship is extremely important because when one has come to know and to develop a personal relationship with the other, 
those difficulties become common difficulties where it's necessary to work and to pray and to, to bear one another's burdens because they affect not only the sufferer but also the friend. And uh, as you will have seen, um, personal friendships developed in the context of the fellowship go on for years and years and they're very important. Father, thank you very much. This interview was very, very interesting. Thank, thank you. you. Спасибо.